Hi there, Perfecto De Caster here and welcome to my channel. I hope you're having a great day. Well, I finally did it. Here is the cheap beginner guitar, all upgraded and modified. Now, should you do the same? Well, in this video, I'm gonna show you exactly what I did to this Glary and share my thoughts on the entire process. Here we go. It took me a while to make this upgrades video because there has been a lot of development since the last time you all saw this Glary here on my channel. And at one point I even considered just leaving it alone and putting the work into another guitar. But finally I flipped the coin and the Glary won the toss, so here we are. In the set of video that featured this guitar, I recommended changing the tuners, the nut, the pickups, the wiring, the bridge saddles, pretty much everything on this guitar except the body and the neck. And that's exactly what I did. I installed hip shot locking tuners, a brass nut, Sonic pickups, Pistolero Telecaster set with a four-way switch, one, two, three, four, CTS pots, a Sprague Ornish drop capacitor, more on this wiring scheme later. And finally, I went with a lefty Wilkinson Telecaster bridge with brass saddles to flip the angle of the bridge pickup. This fun little mod gives the Glary a Tele Hendrix setup. Now, one thing I didn't do is erase the Glary logo on the headstock. It's gonna stay there so people exactly know what this guitar is. Now, here is the guitar in action on a track I wrote as soon as I finished the upgrades and mods. Now before I show you clips of the mod process, I have to give a couple of disclaimers. Disclaimer number one, while I am a professional guitar player, I am not a professional guitar repair and setup guy. I do know a few things to maintain and keep my guitars in great working order, but I am not experienced or equipped enough to start working on other people's guitars and charge for it. In fact, I am positive that some of the things that I did to this guitar in this video will make professional guitar repair guys cringe. So in short, this video is not meant to be a guitar upgrade tutorial. So if you decide to perform these mods on your own guitar, that is on you. I'm not responsible for whatever may happen. 
Disclaimer number two, I bought all the parts that I used on Amazon, except for the Pistolero pickup set, which were sent to me by Sonic Pickups to check out, but not necessarily review. So the whole sponsored slash non-sponsored thing for this video is in the gray area, and I will just leave it up to you however you wanna think about it. But I will put affiliate links to everything I use in this video in the description in case you are interested. Okay, let's start with the tuners. I went with locking tuners to make for easier string changes. Just pull the string through the post tight and lock it. This lessens the string winds around the tuner post so you can tune up to pitch faster. Plus, less winds also mean better tuning stability since there's no chance for the string to slip on itself. These hip shots installed without any problems and their universal mounting plate system works just as intended. I changed the crappy stock string tees with GraphTech versions to further ensure tuning stability. Next up is the brass nut, and here we start running into issues with the Glary's non-standard specs. After a combination of widening the nut slot and sanding the back of the brass nut, I managed to make it fit. The brass nut already came slotted, so that was one less thing to worry about. Mike of Sonic Pickups generously sent me a set of his Pistolero Tele pickups. These were designed with the input from the guys of Walrus Audio Pedals and came pre-wired for four-way switching. I bought the four-way switch and wiring kit from the Art of Tone website. The kit components are high quality and even uses my favorite Sprague orange drop capacitor. The schematics and soldering were a little tricky, but I'm glad I paid some attention to my high school technical classes at Don Bosco Makati. In test fitting the pickups and wiring harness, I ran into more problems with the Glary's stock parts. The Pistolero neck pickup didn't fit through the Glary pickguard, and the CTS pot shafts were also too big for the Glary's control plate. So out came the Dremel and I managed to widen the holes to make the new parts fit. The Dremel is pretty much the hero tool for the rest of the mods of this guitar. I already mentioned the lefty Wilkinson Tele bridge with brass saddles. I've always felt that single coil bridge pickups are angled the wrong way because the already bright treble strings are made even brighter by the pickup being angled close to the bridge. In theory, flipping the pickup angle the other way will add some warmth to the treble strings and clarity to the bass strings. Thankfully, the four bridge mounting holes on the Glary lined up with the Wilkinson bridge, so I didn't need to plug and redrill these holes. The Wilkinson also allowed for top mount stringing, so I didn't have to drill holes for stringing through. However, I assumed that the Glary was routed for a bridge humbucker, which it was not. So I still had to take out some wood to accommodate the lefty pickup angle. Now here comes the part that will make the guitar repair pros and the faint of heart cringe. You've been warned. After marking out the route using the Wilkinson bridge, I tried rough carving it with my Rambo knife, <laughs> then finally gave that up in favor of the Dremel. Freehanding this route was exciting to say the least and required my full attention. I did go slightly overboard with the freehand Dremeling as you can see in this pic where the cavity can be seen from the side of the bridge. <laughs> Oops. This goes to show that pro repair guys are worth their rates because they would have the proper tools and templates to do this cleanly. Of course, I wouldn't do this to a nicer and more expensive guitar, but the Glary being an $89 guitar did give me permission to be more adventurous and take more risks in my problem solving. Now, while I was at it, I decided to shield the cavities with some copper tape. After wiring everything and trying to install the electronics, I discovered that the Glarius control cavity is too shallow for the new four-way switch. After desoldering the pickup wires, the Dremel saves the day again, and I managed to add more depth in the cavity to make the switch fit. Once all that was sorted out, I decided to give the frets a quick level, recrown, and buffing to hopefully fix some of the nickel and dime rattling noise this guitar has when playing it. Well, it's alive. <laughs> Lots more things to do. I need to set it up. I need to set the intonation. As you can see, the saddles are still straight. I need to tweak the nut height. I need to cut these wild strings. Oh, and I need uh, new knobs for the uh, CTS pots because the old knobs didn't fit. Anyway, it's a work in progress, but <laughs> it's turning out to be interesting. And this is how I play guitar after dealing with a uh, Dremel and sanding all day.
I'll be detailing the entire setup process. So once that video is out, you can click on the card above to go watch it or check it out in the end screen credits. I will say that the Music Nomad setup kit and tools are definite must-haves for every guitar or bass player. These three cases have every single guitar-specific tool you'll need to work on your instrument. From truss rod and nut wrenches, to driver bits, to setup gauges, and even a handy knob puller. Okay, so that turned out to be a lot more work than I had anticipated. So now the question remains, was it worth it? After several days of thrashing this guitar and playing the crap out of it, I can honestly say that I have fixed most of the Glary's issues. The tuning is solid even after hard playing and wild string bending, and that already makes this guitar gig worthy. And thanks to the Sonic Pickups Pistolero set and four-way switching, this guitar also sounds great and is quite versatile. I get the standard Telecaster pickup positions of bridge, both pickups in parallel, and neck, Plus, the fourth position gives me both pickups in series, essentially giving me a humbucker, which is great for high gain tones. And the lefty bridge pickup angle does make the treble strings sing more, while giving extra spank to the bass strings. Now, despite all the upgrades, this Clary has not been magically transformed into a sewer. It still is very much a cheap guitar, albeit a great sounding one. And while it is reliable enough for me to gig with, I still would prefer to play my other nicer guitars for my own enjoyment. So the answer to the was it worth it question is actually twofold. If you're looking to make this cheap guitar more valuable by tossing upgrades into it, then don't do it. There are better mod platforms out there that require less fixing, so you can focus on the transformation aspect of the project. But if you want to experience the joy and uh, frustrations of tinkering and learning the inner workings of an electric guitar, then by all means, go for it. As I already mentioned, the Glary's cheap price gave me permission to scratch my DIY itch and be more adventurous in my problem-solving approach. The guitar tinkering experience I gained from all this made the entire ordeal worth it. Okay, there you have it. I had a lot of fun modding this guitar and putting this video together. So I hope you found it informative or at the very least entertaining. Now, what do you think of the mods and upgrades I gave this guitar? Let me know in the comment section. And as always, if you dug this video, please give it a thumbs up like, hit subscribe if you haven't yet, and don't forget to ring that bell. Now go grab your guitar and play something. You all know the drill, practice makes perfecto. Cheers guys.